Hello, everybody, and welcome back inside the State Champ Studio, along with former Michigan State Spartan Mackenzie Long. My name is Kara Lyles. And Kenzie, today just feels like one of those days, like Christmas Eve, all the butterflies in your stomach. I mean, the big day's tomorrow. What are those girls going through? Yeah, this is what you work all season for, mm -hmm. you know, heading into playoffs, heading into those one and dones. And it's exciting. It's exciting for the teams that are favorites, and it's exciting for the teams that can upset. And so I look forward to this weekend. I'm so excited to dive in, you know, all of these, like you said, upsets. We've got huge matchups right off the bat. Yeah, right off the bat. And I think when you're able to have huge games right off the bat. Mm -hmm. It kind of propels you to go move forward. Right. And either way, you're going to run into these teams. Yep. So whether you do it in districts, regionals, quarters, doesn't matter. Yep. It's exciting to play competitive games. When you were in high school, it was your, I mean, when I was in high school, I know my first game out, uh, like my first district game was our biggest competition. Yeah, we, like, you know, it's a little bit different in California, okay. but when you're when you're playing right away, it, mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to get the nerves out. And yeah. so let's go. When let's you play in. a big team, mm -hmm. you're you're kind of a little bit more focused, yep. prepared, mm -hmm. and things like that. And so um, it's going to be fun to see what happens. Well, let's just jump right into it. Start off with Division Four. I want to know: Do you have any standout teams? Yeah, I think. Um, USA is going to be another yep. one. They were defending champs last year. Yep. They're doing really well. They're ranked number one in Division Four, and so I think that they have a chance to go far. And excited to see if they can have repeat. Yeah. Do you think you know them having that experience and going back to that state final? Do you think it kind of helps or hinders? Yeah, it could work against you, and mm -hmm. it could work for you. It could work against you in the, the pressure and the want mm -hmm. to repeat and all things like that. But it could work for you in the stance of. You know, you've been there, you know what it takes, you understand what it's like to perform in big games, you understand close games. Um, so really it's just a mindset and which way are they going to go, what route are they going to take for you or feel the pressure. And at the end of the day, no matter who you are, you're going to have pressure. So I um, encourage USA to not make it too much pressure right. and run with it. As a coach, would you prefer having been there before or would you prefer having girls that have never been there before? It's yeah, tough one, right? It is a tough one. I think a balance of both is yep. perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Is having the leaders to allow the younger mm -hmm. players to come with them and show them the ropes, mm -hmm. but also having the, the young ones are super important in this playoffs because yep. there's excitement. Yep. There's, you know, this freshness. And so, the, you know, the freshmen and sophomores are important for these yeah. teams this year. Um, for districts, regionals, is you want that newness. Mm -hmm. You want that excitement yep. and, you know, not the dullness of just another game. Right. And being, you know, one of the juniors or the seniors that have been there before, to be able to see your younger teammates, like, this is it. This is what we've been talking about all season. Yeah. You know, I when you have a mixture of both, they kind of bring along each other, right? Mm -hmm. You you get the freshness, you get the excitement. Nerves are good. And yes. I think that's something that players want to run from mm -hmm. is they get that nerves and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Yep. No, nerves are really, really good yep. and important because nerves means it means something exactly. to you. Yep. And so for the older players, if they're when they're working with the younger players, it's good that they feed off those nerves mm -hmm. because it means something to the younger players and it should mean something right. to the older players as well. Are there any teams in Division Four that you might think are sleepers? Yeah, I think Orchard Lake St. Mary's has okay. a chance to make a run. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're led by Maddie Anson, mm -hmm. and, you know, she's been out a little bit, but I think if she's able to come back, be healthy, and pitch on the mound, and mm -hmm. she's a force in the box as well, you know, they might be a tough out. All it takes is one game, you it know? Does. And, yep. and when you have somebody like Anson who's able to, to throw it mm -hmm. and hit it, you know, she could be the one, and Orchard Lake St. Mary's could be a sleeper team. And going into it, you know, this is the time where you want to have your whole team locked in. You know, you want to have everybody healthy and locked in. How important is that for Orchard Lake St. Mary's? Yeah, you, for sure. And it's actually a good thing for Orchard Lake St. Mary's because they were able to play mm -hmm. really good competition without her. So important. So they were able to yep. kind of feed off each other and have somebody else be the role player, be important. Mm -hmm. And so now those players, you add Anson into that, yep. and now they have a chance to make a run at it. Mm -hmm. And how about Division Three? I mean, any standout teams for you? Yeah, you have Algonac, you have Almont, you have Ever, and you have Millington, the defending champs. Yep. All, all four of them have a chance to make a run at it. Um, and so it's going to be a good competition at Division Three level. That's There's so many, you know, right off the bat, there's going to be so many big games. And how fun does it make it? And just be able to like watch the tournament, kind of take a step back and see how things play out. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is my favorite time of the year. I love mm -hmm. being a fan at this time because yep. This is when your players, whether it's your unsung heroes, yep. come out and perform, or your big time names. Mm -hmm. And you know, 
it's one of those times where it doesn't matter who performs, mm -hmm. and it just matters if the team We're getting performs. It done. Yes, yep. and so it's kind of fun to see the, the elite players becoming mm -hmm. selfless teammates and just being role players. And it's fun to see the role players now turn out and be standout players. Like it's just it's so fun, you know, because like you said, it's so much more about team over me now. Yes, even 100%. for the big names. It's no, we want to win. I don't care about stats anymore. I don't care about anything but winning. Yeah, and you know, Algonac has two players on our list in Ella Stevenson and Kenna Bomaredo, mm -hmm. and so that's huge for them because yep. they're able to lean on each other, mm -hmm. and so that's why they're, they're a favorite going into Division III is, is either one of them can show up, but they also have a team around them that's shown right. that they can play defense in big time games. Mm -hmm. um, they've been in really close games, um, and they they perform. Right. And so when you're performing in close games throughout the season, mm -hmm. it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off, and so yeah. that's exciting for them. And you talked about defense. I know we talked about it a lot last week. It's so important you know, to focus on the little things and make sure you're doing all of those things right. Yes, defense is a game changer. Mm -hmm. I'm the it team is. that plays good defense is the team that's gonna win. Mm -hmm. And I and for our teams this week and moving forward, if they wanna if they wanna win, they need to put together good defensive mm -hmm. performances. All it takes is one run. Mm -hmm. One run is the difference between a win and a loss and we've seen that in years past and we've seen that we'll see that again this year yeah. is, is the team that's able to put together really good strong defensive performances. Mm -hmm and maybe tack in a few runs here and there mm -hmm. are the teams that are going to move forward. And that's what just makes it so exciting because you don't know. You don't. Anything can happen. Any, Truly anything can mm -hmm. happen. Are there any sleepers for you in Division Three? Yeah, you know, Grass Lake is a sleeper. Okay. Grass Lake is a, a strong hitting team. They have a mm -hmm. lot of really good hitters. Um, Olivia Turner's on our list. She's mm -hmm. a phenomenal hitter. She's had a great season. You have, you know, there's just all together they've put together really high offensive numbers mm -hmm. for for them and it's now can they just pitch it in the circle. They got right. two seniors um, leading the way in the circle and so when you have experience on the mound right. coupled with a really, really good offensive team mm -hmm. with Riley Fitzpatrick and Emily right. Guthrie and Olivia Turner, it's hard, it's gonna be hard, they're gonna be a hard out. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, I think it was a couple weeks ago, we talked about how important it is to have, you know, the lineup. It's not just one through five, it's they have a whole lineup. They, oh my on. gosh, they really do. They mm -hmm. really have a, a really good strong lineup. And, and one through nine have performed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they put up some strong numbers against some really, really quality opponents yep. this year. And now are they able to do that and perform defensively? Right. They're, they're gonna be a really tough out. And I, I truly think that they're our sleeper team for um, Division Three. It's a mix, you gotta have everything mm -hmm. clicking right now. Yes. You really do, okay. Moving on, Division Two. Do we have any standouts? Yeah, you have Gaylord, yeah. you have Chelsea, you have Escanaba. Mm -hmm. um, all three of them have a chance. And then you have Stevensville Lakeshore, who was mm -hmm. the defending champs last year. Yep. Um, when you're looking at Division Two this year, I mean, it's a very, very, very. strong um, division. They've all all of those teams have gone on and played and competed really well against yep. Division One teams, and so it's going to be a tough out for any one of those teams. It's. And I feel like it's so cool because you have, you know, that week before districts when these Division Two teams are facing these Division One teams and you're like, hey, like these girls are legit. Yeah, Gaylord, you know, they're, they've done a really good job of coming down mm -hmm. and playing really good teams. They've yep. traveled far yep. to put to play the best in Division One. You and, have to, and right? That's, exactly. That's going to prepare them for this week and that's going to prepare them moving forward. Um, they have really good, they have the Jones sisters that are mm -hmm. just phenomenal athletes. And then you have Chelsea, who also does a really good job of scheduling really yep. good teams. I mean, they have uh, they have really good senior leadership in Underwood on the mound. Yep. You know, they have Maya Purdy at shortstop. And then they have a freshman catcher in Katie Absher that's really, really done a good job mm -hmm. of being behind the plate and, and settling Underwood. Mm -hmm. I mean, Underwood is an elite pitcher. And so I'm excited to see what Chelsea can do. Talk about, you know, just a presence, having a freshman catcher and her being able to, you know, calm down her team and yeah. just be the leader out there as yeah. a catcher. Well, and, and I think it's, it's going to be unique for Chelsea because they have senior leadership yep. in Purdy, in Underwood. For sure. Um, but they've never had a freshman in the last mm -hmm. 20 years be on the team. That's amazing. And so it's really cool to see the freshness and the newness of mm -hmm. Katie yep. and what she brings to these leaders mm -hmm. and what she brings to the to the team atmosphere, culture. Yeah. Um, but Emily Underwood is a, a proven competitor. Yep. She's done a great job. I'm excited to see her finish out her career. And same with Maya Purdy. Mm -hmm. What about any sleepers? in our division two. Yeah, I think, you know, I really think Goodrich okay. is, a, is a sleeper team. Okay. Um, they have two great players. They have a pitcher that can pitch it. She can mm -hmm. throw up zeros. 
Um, and Jaden Ghost, she, she's a phenomenal pitcher. She throws hard. She mixes speed. Mm -hmm. She has a good changeup, and she's and she's a great does a great job in the box. Mm -hmm. But they also have Brooklyn Wyzelik, who is a senior, who's mm -hmm. been there, who's done that, who can be the one who who hits the bomb. She has yep. 18 home runs on the year, yep. and all it takes is one run mm -hmm. with Jaden Ghost on the mound. So between Jaden Ghost and then them being able to hit together, mm -hmm. they're a sleeper team, and you know I'm excited to see them. I'm excited to see Jaden throw, mm -hmm. but I'm excited to see them kind of push and make um, teams uncomfortable. Yeah, and like you said, you know it just takes one run, and that's why, you know, we say sleeper team, but it's not necessarily a sleeper team. It's just teams that you know they're ready to go out there and get after it. Yeah, when you. The key to, to this, to districts, regionals, and moving forward mm -hmm. is when you have a pitcher mm -hmm. that is, can throw up zeros, mm -hmm. then that one run can come off anything. Yeah. It can come off a walk, it can come off a Overthrows, hit by pitch. Anything. Anything, errors. And so, mm -hmm. so when you have these teams that are our sleeper teams in mm -hmm. any division, most of the time it has to do with the fact that they have somebody on the mound that can perform, mm -hmm. and then they have players in the box that can be the one that just brings one run in. Yep. And also, all it takes is one run. And so Jaden goes, she can throw up zeros. Yep. She has a lot of strikeouts on the air. She's done a good job against some good Division One teams. Mm -hmm. And so we're excited to see what she does. And in this Division Two, we have so many huge games right off the bat. Yes, we so do. So many. You know, two of our favorites are Gaylord and Escanaba, and mm -hmm. they play each other right away in, in districts. Which is right away. Like, mm -hmm. that's insane. Yeah, and you know, they've played each other in the season mm -hmm. and Gaylord beat them nine to zero. But anything can happen in districts and yeah. when it's a one and done game. I feel like that's a lifetime ago. Yeah, exactly, know? exactly. And so right away you have them and so it'll be good to see what happens um, in that districts and mm -hmm. whoever wins that district, you know, they have a chance to go yeah. pretty far. Yep. Which I I love it because you don't know. Yeah, you don't. Anything can happen mm -hmm. on any given day and that's why softball is just <laughs> yes, exactly. It's fun to watch. Yes. All right, Division One standouts. Who we got? You know, you got Grand Blank, mm -hmm. you have Hudsonville, you have Dakota, mm -hmm. and you have Allen Park in the defending champs. I mean, all four of them have a chance to make a run. Mm -hmm. All four of them have a chance to be upset, too, mm -hmm. right? It really is. They're, yep. they're, I don't think there's a clear favorite in Division One. I think that there's a lot of teams that are have a lot of courage and culture that are yep. wanting to help them move forward. And so, Division One's gonna be a fun, fun to see oh, who yeah. kind of comes out on top. We, I feel like you know we have all of these big names, all of our top ten players. Like they're coming out and they're just firing away. Like yes. this is the time for them. I feel like. Well, in each each one of these teams, um, they have really, really good players on our mm -hmm. on on the team. Um, and I mean. All three of our, Grand Blank has a player on our top 10 yep. list, Hudsonville has a player on our top 10 list in Beamer, mm -hmm. Dakota has a player on our top 10 list in Megan Nectarline, yep. Allen Park, Sizemore was on our mm -hmm. list for a long time, they have so they have a quality lineup and so all of them, all four of them have really, really good players mm -hmm. and players around them that are yep. very strong players as well and so, you know, the other thing about these teams is they have senior pitchers for the most mm -hmm. part. I mean, Graham Blank has a senior pitcher in Sydney Long. Alan Park has a senior pitcher in Morgan Sizemore. Mm -hmm. Dakota has a senior pitcher in Megan Nectarline. And so when you can have seniors on the mound, mm -hmm. it's their last go in their high school uniform. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing for them. Mm -hmm. And talk about just battles, you yes. know, senior pitchers going up. You, you have the swag already, you know, you, you're not really you know, trying to prove yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. you are in a way, but you've been there before. You've been there before, exactly. And most of these pitchers, you know, Sydney Lawn's going to Wayne State, right. and Dakota and um, Megan McElhine of Dakota is going to Kent State, right. and um, Morgan Sizemore is going to Akron. Mm -hmm. And so they're all committed, yep. they're all done, and so now they're just doing it for the fun of their community, yep. their high school. Mm -hmm. um, and when you know you're going on and playing at the next level, you do have some sort of like you said some swag in you yep. and some there's not like this like oh my gosh pressure that this once I'm done yeah. you know I'm done with playing yes they they have a future yep. and so now they just get to go out and just show out for their community and yep. their high school and how fun is that to be able to go out you know I know you've got the whole community coming out to the games and you know to be able to go out there and put on for your community how special is that yeah that's a lot of fun I got the opportunity to go to some of the district mm -hmm. games and regional games last year and I'll go again this year and it's you know it's a crowd the weather's gonna be great yep. um, you get to see some really quality games and so it's fun to be able to play around and rally around your community yep. and, 
Um, it, it, it's exciting. And you can just tell that they want to bring home, you know, all of these titles for their community. It's just so bad. It's like the love for the game and the love for the community. You can see it right now. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And so for Dakota with their, you know, they have a, they have a mm -hmm. really strong senior um, class. Yeah. And so they are going to play with a little bit more you know, just, they have a little bit more push, you yeah, know, and yep. then you have Hudsonville, who's on the other side of the state, who wants to prove something, yep. you know, and Grand Blank has a quality, quality lineup yep. um, with great pitching and things like that, and so they're going to want to prove something, and then there's always that want to, to go back to back, and that's what yep. Allen Park wants to yep. do, you know, they, they have, they have the lineup to be able to go back to back, yep. and so will they be able to perform and show out? totally see what kind of team shows up. We'll see, I don't know. There's one more thing that I did want to ask you about. You mentioned, you know, being able to play with your high school teammates. And you know, for some people, this is good. This is it. Tomorrow's yes. it for them. Exactly, there's a lot of players that tomorrow be, might be the last time they mm -hmm. lace up their uniform or lace up their cleats. Ah, I just got goosebumps. Yeah, <laughs> and it, you know, and so, I mean, good for them, right? Awesome. Good for yeah. them that yep. they played um, a high school sport and good for all those players that are going to go on and do something with their life mm -hmm. beyond the sport of softball. Right. And that's, you know, and that's, you're just a, you're just somebody that plays softball. Yep. Your identity is not in softball. Your right. identity is in, in who you are as a person yep. and you just happen to play softball. So those players that are going to end their career tomorrow for, for good, you know, yep. congratulations on a great year. Yeah. Um, congratulations on a great career yep. and good, good luck. And I want to talk softball, just the game of softball. What is it do you think that is going to be, you know, the factor going through this tournament? What do these teams really need to focus on as they're looking to make that push? You know, when you, it's all about the team. Mm -hmm. It really is, and, and it's all about execution. Yeah. I think execution is the key. Can you execute, can you do the little things right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that gets overlooked the most, in, not only in high school, but in travel ball, is base running. Okay. Base mm -hmm. running is huge because you know, a base hit can turn into a run mm -hmm. or it can turn into just another base and you're running 60 feet at a time. And right. so when you're able to execute in the box, execute on defense, mm -hmm. but the key really is gonna be who base runs, who can put together really good, who can string together hits, but mm -hmm. when you string together hits, are you able to score those runs? Yep. And are you able to stop the bleeding mm -hmm. um, when those runs are happening? And base running shows that, right? In the sense of, you know, a ball hit to the outfield, are you stopping the runner from coming to second? Or are you yep. in leaving them at first? Are you letting them go to second? And now yep. another base hit scores another run. Mm -hmm. And now you put up crooked numbers. Yeah, and you know, like we talked about adversity. We've talked about it all season long. This is the time to really just be like, okay, we've got to get through this somehow. This is, this is it. Well, adversity is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And my biggest encouragement to the players is, is own your impact, whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. whether that's if you're having a hard time in the box, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's gonna happen. It's you don't softball. You don't mm -hmm. need to be the hero. But what you can do is you can go out and you can impact the game on the defensive end, mm -hmm. or as a teammate, or helping the next player hit the ball, whatever that looks like. So instead of you know being so upset that you're not performing, help the other team. Somebody else is. Yes, yep. and help them. And that and that those are the, the the teams that are able to pass the bat, do your play your role mm -hmm. in whatever that looks like in that moment. Your role can change from moment to moment, but right. if you're able to own your role, own your impact in the moment that you're in, mm -hmm. that's all that matters. And that was the perfect segue to my next question. How important is it for, you know, going into these last couple of weeks to just live in the moment and enjoy where you're at? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is the best time of the year. Mm -hmm. This is super exciting. Um, and so enjoy it, yeah. right? Enjoy it because the hustle and bustle of travel ball is going to come and the recruiting and the stress of all that is going to come. Yep. But right now you could just get to play for the love of the game. Yep. And how awesome is that? There's no, there's no fear of m making a mistake because there's college coaches in the right. stands. It's you're just doing it to win a game. You're mm -hmm. just doing it to move on. You're just doing it for your seniors and you're just doing it to just continue your season. Mm -hmm. And so the selflessness really comes out. And so when you can live in the moment, that's when you're going to have the most fun. And don't look ahead. That would be yep. my biggest don't encouragement is don't, you know, I've been hearing it a little bit this week. It's like, oh, we have this for districts and, and then, then we'll we have this for regionals. Like no, live in this moment, mm -hmm. live tomorrow, yep. then move on and worry about regionals. Live yep. in that moment, then move on and worry about quarterfinals. 
don't look ahead and be like, oh, in quarterfinals, we're going to run into this strong team. Because you don't know You that. don't know. And you don't yeah. know if you're going to get there, and you don't know if they're going to get there. Right. Do we have any sleeper teams in Division One? Yeah, we do, in Heartland. Okay. I, I think okay. Heartland is a, is a sleeper team. They have, they're led by a senior in Kylie Sorcos um, yes. and Abby Gardner. Yes. And both both of them have been four-year seniors, or four-year starters on yep. varsity. Um, Kylie is on our list. She has put together some really, really good numbers. Yes. Um, and so I do think that if she's able to perform and the team around them are able to score some runs, I think that they have a shot to make a little run for it. And we, I mean, we've talked about her often on this show. She's a leader and she's somebody that's going to go out there and fight for all of it, you know? When you watch Kylie, you mm -hmm. know it means a lot to her. Like 100%. you know that that's what she wants and that's, and she, you just see the fight yep. and the grit in it. And, and so I do think that Heartland has a chance to go far, but they also have a chance to be upset. And so it's just one of those things mm -hmm. where, you know, they're a phenomenal team and I'm looking forward to them, to watching them. Mm -hmm. um, I actually will be at their district this weekend yep. um, because they have a lot of good teams around them in their district. But I do think that they have a chance to kind of move forward um, with the help of Kylie Sorcos on the mound. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kate McIntyre's got to perform in the box, and Skylar Spiz has to perform in the box. Mm -hmm. um, if they can get those going, and Abby Gardner, they have a chance to really go far. And it's just so exciting because, you know, you do work all season for, the, for this moment, mm -hmm. you know, for this weekend and for these weeks ahead. It's just so exciting to see, you know, the grit really come out in all of these girls. Yes, and you know, kudos for the grit. You know, mm -hmm. I think the grit, grit, being gritty is probably the most important tool mm -hmm. in, in playoff softball is, are you, you know, the nerves are gonna happen. So yep. in the moment when you need to perform with two strikes, are you able to do that? Mm -hmm. And and you know, the other thing that's going on right now is college softball, right? right. The, is the World Series right. starts, mm -hmm. right? And so is watch those watch those games. Mm -hmm. Watch the the grittiness of those mm -hmm. players because that's what's gonna help our players move forward, right? Yep. When you watch Kinsey Hansen yep. hit a home run with two strikes, yes, that's a physical, like she's physically able to do that. Right. But it's the grit. It's the I'm not out until we're mm -hmm. out of it. The you have to get me out on the last pitch. Yep. And you can learn a lot by watching them play mm -hmm. and watching the grit from Clemson and things like that putting mm -hmm. on a good run. Yep. And so you know, while districts is happening, make sure you're watching the college games yeah. too because that's where you're going to get the characteristic components yeah. of what makes great teams win. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, the girls that we have talked about in all of our teams will go play at that next level yes. and some of them might be, you know, in the same boat sooner yes. or later. So Yeah, and you know, you, you, you can learn a lot about what's important by watching the college game. Yep. You can watch the team celebrate walks, you can yep. watch the team celebrate hit by pitches or st stolen bases. Yeah or diving plays or strikeouts. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know that every pitch matters when you're at the um, College World Series. Right. And so it's, it's important for our players to watch that because I think they will take on what's important to the college yep. players. And when you take that on, that's the recipe for success. Yep. And you know when you, when you can see it on TV and mm -hmm. see what the recipe for success is, just, just mock that. And just, it just gets you hyped. Oh, you know, yeah. just watching them oh, get so gosh. excited. You're like, okay, I get to go play tomorrow, and I'm gonna be that. This excited. is like the best time of the year it when is. you get to watch it district is. softball, and you get to watch regionals, yep. and you get to watch the women's college world series. Yep. I mean, I'm pumped for a I'm weekend pumped. of softball. <laughs> well, we've got a familiar face back on our top ten list this week. Yeah, we're adding Ella Stevenson back on the list. You know, she's going. She's at Algonac with her mm -hmm. teammate Kenna Bomarito. Yep. And Algonac goes as far as Ella Stevenson goes. Mm -hmm. In the last, you know, 10 games or so, she's done a great job. She's really doing a good job in the box, and mm -hmm. so we're excited to have her back on our list. And it's important to know that we do freeze our top 10 list after regionals, but two years ago, Ava Bradshaw was added right after districts, and she ended up going on to win our softball player of the year. Yeah, you know, when you perform in big games, mm -hmm. that's that's huge. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, two years ago when Ava was able to do that and make a little run and win a state championship, yep. that's what we're looking for is you can be really good in, in games that don't really matter right. in the middle of the season, but when you're able to perform and show out in games that matter, right. that's that's what makes you a player of mm -hmm. the year. And so just like Ava, it can happen to any player. Um, and we're watching closely to see what players perform in districts and beyond. In these big games, yes. right? Like you said. While Megan Nectarline is still leading our online vote, you can cast your vote for her or any of our members of the top 10 list at statechampsw.com.
Well, we are so, so excited to see what plays out this weekend and what plays out in these next coming weeks. But I, do you have any last minute advice for these girls as they go into the tournament? Yeah, I, my, my advice would be be you. Mm -hmm. Be you. Don't try to be anything bigger than you need to be. Mm -hmm. Play in your zone. Play in who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't let the game bigger, get bigger than it is. And just be you. You are enough. And so you're, because you're enough, you'll, your performance will be enough. Yep. And I know one thing for sure. The bats all season have just been on fire. And I know this weekend and going into that state final on June 17th, the bats are going to be hot. Yes, and we've talked about how important defense is, so it's really important that our middle infielders continue to turn to. State Champ Swing Away is presented by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic, visit ltu.edu. Swing Away is also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud sponsor of the MHSAA. The Detroit Athletic Club Foundation Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards. Who will be this year's award winners? Find out live June 5th only on State Champ Sports Network. Turn into softball. Experience Turn into softball where the mission to build champions both on and off the field.